Welcome to the Q1 Buck Poll. I'm Tim Hart with Mike Big Buck Hofter. Well, another year is in the books so far as registering deer. But I will tell you, the parties are getting ready to start. Yeah, they're just around the corner. I mean, it's been a real interesting close to the season. I mean, the weather was kind of strange. And one of the things that I heard this year talking to a lot of hunters is that those deer were locked down toward the end of the season. Exactly right. Well, one person that had a successful hunt uh, here recently was Kevin Keck. He, uh, as part of the Make-A-Wish Foundation, went on a hunt with the Tony Semple Foundation. And uh, so we're going to show and feature him on the show today. Well, I want to put a plug in for Kevin. You know, he's a student of ours at the Branch Area Career Center. And you talk about a guy that's grateful for the things he's been given. And I'll tell you, he, the one thing he loves is he loves to talk deer hunting. When I see him every day, he's got that big smile on his face. And the other thing that uh, Big Buck Hoffner loves to talk about, and that is food. Well, this week we've got Chef Sean McGee on from the Soaring Eagle Casino. Caribbean jerk loin with grilled sweet potatoes and grilled asparagus. I don't even like asparagus, mm, and it was delicious. Well, I'd like to see if they, I'm going to St. Martin for a uh, week's vacation. I wonder if they make that over there. Mm, I doubt <laughs> Probably it. Probably not. I'll bring the venison. I don't believe I'll bring the venison if you on took the, the venison, maybe. We also have the DNR. Kevin Fraley is going to be talking about the history and the heritage of the DNR. And then we have Tony the Pratt talking about shooting does out of your buck stand. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, I got a certain stand. I'm going to shoot whatever comes in out of that stand. Not necessarily the best thing if you want the big buck to eventually come that way. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, we spent last week uh, at his facilities and, uh, you know, he knows what he's talking about because if you counted the numbers of big bucks that he had on his wall, that's a secret. Listen to what Tony has to say and you'll bag that big one too. When we come back, we'll also have a lot of bugs with Big Buck Hoffner. Remember, you can go online to q1buckpull.com and see all the deer registered this year. Tim Hart, Mike Big Buck Hoffner, stay with us. You're watching the Q1 Buck. The Q1 Buck Poll is sponsored by these participating businesses who support the great outdoors in Michigan. Back here on the Q1 Buck Poll, a reminder that you can go to the Q1BuckPoll.com website and you can take a look at all the deer that have registered in the contest. And we have some really nice bucks here with Big Buck Hoffner. Well, bucks are us, Tim, and here we go. Mike Hitchings from Scotts with a 10-pointer. The score was 49. Mark Richardson from Harrison brings in a 10-pointer. His score was 49 and a quarter. Dale Hadley from Chelsea brings in an 11-point buck. His score was 50 and a half. And Philip Johnston from Port Huron brings his 11-pointer in that scores 51. One of the things that we like to do here on the Q1 Buck Poll, and that is feature successful hunters. But on today's show, we have kind of a special story. Kevin Keck is with us. He uh, had a chance to go on a Make-A-Wish Foundation hunt with the Tony Semple Foundation. And you know, Mike, he's a student at the Career Center, and what a wonderful kid. Yeah, I'll tell you, he's a great kid. Uh, that kid comes to school every single day, whether he's walking in the building, walking out the door, he's got the biggest smile uh, that you'll ever see. And I'll tell you what, he loves to talk deer hunting. I'm now talking to Kevin Keck from Bronson. Kevin, welcome to the Q1 Buck Poll. All right, Kevin is with us here to talk about the Make-A-Wish Foundation, and in particular his hunt uh, that he was able to go on a few years back. But Kevin was successful this year in the youth hunt, and we had him featured on a previous show with his big buck. But Kevin, tell me about your hunt with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. How did it all come about? Oh, it was once in a lifetime wish. I would never thought I would have been able to have the chance to do it. Um, I was actually, I heard from my mom, she was on the phone with uh, Ron Lanford from the vet in Coldwater, mm -hmm. and he said that there was a make-a-wish hunt for kids with disabilities, and man, it was the best time of my life, and I'll never forget it, and it was up in uh, Muy Grande, mm -hmm. Mansion Resort, and it was me and uh, two other boys, and there was supposed to be four of us, but the other two, they couldn't make it, but it was once in a lifetime. And that was through uh, the Tony Semple Foundation yes. up in the Detroit area, right? Yep. Tony Semple is an ex-Lions player. Um, 
He's got a passion, I will tell you this. I've talked to Tony before. He has a passion for the outdoors, but he has a passion for the Make-A-Wish Foundation and helping uh, get kids out there to hunt. Now, how did it work? Uh, you were taken out on ATVs. Were you on ground blinds? How did you hunt? Um, we were actually we were on a ground blind. It was like a shanty type shack. Um, I had a 243 rifle that they supported everything, clothes and everything, and um, had an eight point come out, and there was two of them, and, uh, sitting there, we were debating on which one to go after, and then it got chased off by a real mature buck. Mm -hmm. And then it was getting pretty late, and there was about maybe up to 16 bucks out in the field. And Holy cow. Yeah, it was amazing, and took them at, I think it was two, 256 yards. Quite a and, shot. Now, now, did any of the other kids get a deer, too? Yep, they both got, one got a 10-point, and uh, the other got an 8-point also. Now you suffer from muscular dystrophy. Uh, how does that affect you when you're trying to go out in the woods and that sort of thing, or just in general? Um, it's it's a big toll on me, but I've had it my whole life. I've had it for 14 years now, and it's never slowed me down. I have a passion for deer hunting. I love it, and I'm never gonna stop doing what I love to do, and I'm just gonna keep going at it and keep slaying some big deer. All right, what do you like most about being outside? Um, I love the wildlife, just having something to do with it and just being able to, you know, spend my time out in the woods and being able to have that time with my friends and family. What a great story and um, what a great foundation that Tony Semple has. He is a former Detroit Lion football player and, you know, Mike, it's always great when those guys can give back. Yeah, not only giving back, but I'll tell you what, a lot of uh, professional athletes are passionate about deer hunting, and I like the combination of the passion they have and the ability to give back. Stay with us when we come back. We've got more bucks, plus we're going to talk to the DNR about the, uh, the heritage and history of the DNR. We've got Tony LaPratt, all that, and a lot more bucks with Big Buck Hoffner right here on the Q1 Buck Pool. We're fortunate to live in the great state of Michigan with millions of acres of recreational land, 11,000 inland lakes, and for a lot of people, it's a dream come true to own their own piece of property. Today, I've got Randy Steck with us. He's a Senior Vice President of Sales and Customer Relations at Greenstone Farm Credit Services. Randy, welcome to the show. Thanks, Tim. Now, Greenstone has been a proud sponsor of the Q1 Buck Bowl for a number of years, and you've really helped thousands of Michigan residents own a piece of recreational land. Yes, we, we have provided financing for thousands of folks across the state, and, and we are very happy to be part of that dream building process. And Greenstone has a number of outdoor enthusiasts on staff, but you also have locations all over the state too. Yes, our 31 offices are conveniently located uh, to the, the, the bulk of the customers that we do business with, uh, and we encourage those folks to stop in and talk to us. Uh, we share a lot of the same values and beliefs that, that the outdoors community has, and, and many of our staff actually enjoy the same activities. Randy, there's a lot of different programs too, aren't there? Yes, uh, we can provide financing for up to 30 years uh, and a fixed rate of interest for as little as 20% down. Well, Randy, when we were talking outside, you talked about loans as long as 30 years, as little as 20% down, you've got all different types of programs, but what sets Greenstone apart? Really, it's the, the people that work here at Greenstone and the solutions that we can provide to folks and, and helping them with their dream purchase and uh, whether it's you know a lot of these customers uh, have not had a lot of experience in purchasing real estate or or dealing with a lender so we can walk them through that process and really provide a lot of value uh, expertise and advice to, to help folks through that process and if i want to learn more and uh, get more information you can check us out on the web give us a call or stop by any one of our 31 offices throughout the state of Michigan. And he talks about the 31 offices. That's 31 locations where you can register your buck or doe in the Q1 buck pool. They can take care of you. Randy, thanks for being with us. You're welcome. All right, Randy Steck's been with us from Greenstone Farm Credit Services. I'm Tim Hart, and you're watching the Q1 buck pool. Well, we have another great recipe for you here on the Q1 buck pool. Soaring Eagle chef Sean McGee is going to be with us. But before that... We have Big Bucks with Big Buck Hoffner. Here we go, Tim. Let's start out with Randy Lauk from Stanwood. Brings in a 14-pointer. The score was 52. Jose Rios from MLA City brought in an 11-point buck. The score, 52 and a quarter. And Andy Borders with an 11-pointer from Adrian, Michigan. His score, 54 and three quarters. We've talked about it on the show many times. You know, a lot of people, they get their venison, and what do they do? They just make a venison burger out of it, uh, throw it in the pan, and away they go. Well, we've got some fabulous recipes from the Soaring Eagle chefs, and today, Caribbean jerk loin. 
Can't wait to eat it. We're at the Soaring Eagle Casino with executive sous chef, Sean McGee. Sean, welcome back to the Buck Pool. Thank you very much. Well, I tell you right now, we've got a delicious uh, little cooking segment here today. What are we gonna be cooking up? We're gonna do Caribbean jerk loin with grilled sweet potatoes and grilled asparagus. All right, so we're gonna start with all the ingredients, right, before we get to the loin? Sure, sure, yeah, we're gonna, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna start out with uh, a garlic herb butter to finish the dish, and we're, we're gonna also toss the uh, grilled sweet potatoes in it just to kind of add some different levels to the uh, dish. Uh, so to get started here, we're just gonna take uh, a mixer here. We're gonna get this uh, set up. Uh, just uh, night before, pull out some softened butter, or some butter and to soften it. We're just gonna add that into a mixer. And so we're gonna add some, uh, some ingredients. We're gonna have some sauteed garlic, pre-done, okay? Some sauteed shallots, some fresh chives, and some chopped parsley. And then all we're gonna do here is uh, mix this together slowly. I like to mix it a little, turn it off, take a rubber spatula, kind of so we can all mix evenly. Scrape this walls. It takes a few seconds, so but you want to do this maybe the day before you're going to actually do the dish just so it can be in the fridge and, and uh, firmed back up because otherwise it's going to be really soft. Right. All right, so now we're going to uh, blanch the asparagus. Correct. Uh, we're going to start out with some uh, boiling water and we're going to season that with some salt. And the reason why you do that is uh, salt will help preserve the green, the nice green color of asparagus, okay? So basically we're going to just take the asparagus, we've already cleaned up the ends. I'm going to drop that into the hot water. This process is only going to take about a minute, minute and a half. Once, once asparagus starts turning nice and green, you want to remove from the hot water and go right into some ice water. Okay. And that's going to stop the cooking process to uh, allow us to grill it later to it so it still has a nice bite to it. All right, so we're just kind of prepping it right now correct. before we grill it to finish the cooking. Absolutely, yep, correct. So uh, basically what I like to do is just kind of just move it around slightly. You don't have to do a whole lot with this process. Just watch it. Just can't overcook it or otherwise, once it goes to the grill, it's no good. Right. So, and now we're ready to remove this from the, the hot water into the cold water. This is called an ice bath, just to stop the cooking process of the asparagus. Okay, so now we're up to the sweet potatoes. Yes, sir. We are going to take uh, sweet potato fingerlings. And these are just small, little uh, sweet potatoes. Um, I've done the same process. I blanched these in a salted water for about, I got it up to a boil and let them cool down for about 20 minutes on the counter and now they're nice and soft and tender. Mm -hmm. They're ready to go ahead and cut. So basically for this dish we're just going to cut these in half. And we're getting ready to go to the grill for this. Uh, we're gonna take these sweet potatoes, we're gonna add them into a bowl. Add some olive oil. Salt. And some cracked pepper. Okay, you saw us uh, prep these uh, potatoes. Now we're just gonna add them right to a hot, clean grill. This process will not take long because we've already blanched these in ahead of time. And we're gonna have skin side up on these? Yeah, we're gonna start with the skin side up. And then uh, once we get some nice color and some good grilled flavor on those potatoes, we're going to uh, flip them over. And then as those are going, also we can start the asparagus. We're going to start with a little olive oil, a little salt and pepper. Just enough to coat them lightly. Then we're going to grill that up. Okay, here goes the fun part. We're going to get our venison loin ready. I like to cut it pretty thin slices because I don't want to cook it too long to make sure that uh, they don't get overcooked. Basically at this point, 
lay your meat out. And we're gonna season this with some jerk seasoning. You buy this at your local grocery store, same with the regular spices. You're gonna season both sides Absolutely. then, right? Absolutely, and don't be shy with this. this. There's nothing really spicy in here, just a lot of great flavors. Okay, now this steak is ready for the grill. And this cooking process is only gonna take about a minute because we cut it so thin. You can cut it thicker or thinner the way you like it. This is the way we prefer it. But a big key there is not to overcook it. Not to overcook it, that's correct. Okay, you're gonna allow this to go about 30 to 35 seconds on one side. And again, making sure your grill's nice and hot. This is very important. This is something you can do with beef or anything. Absolutely, you can use it with beef, chicken, you know, pork, whatever you uh, are liking to have that evening. Just added some uh, some of the garlic herb butter to a pan and gently heated that up. Squeeze some lime juice in there to kind of keep it together so it doesn't break and look like oil. Okay. Uh, so now we're ready to go ahead and start this dish. Finish this dish off. We're gonna take some uh, grilled sweet potatoes. This really is something that's uh, relatively easy to make at home, isn't it? It is. It really is. You can just uh, do this in a matter of a time. You just need to make sure you do the butter ahead at a time, just because that's going to take some time to uh, thaw out or soften up, so you can uh, whip it and add the ingredients. Okay, we're going to finish the dish with some grilled asparagus. You know, it's like an artist at work right here. You know that, right? Oh, I don't know about <laughs> all that, but... Oh, that's what I'm looking at. Then we just uh, take a little bit of this garlic herb butter, we melt it down with some lime juice, and just toss that over that. You know, some people might just like to dump the whole thing on it. You know that, right? Absolutely. <laughs> hey, whatever they, whatever they Whatever you like. like. And that's how we do Caribbean jerk venison loin with grilled sweet potatoes and grilled asparagus. You know, a lot of people have questions about the DNR. When did it get started? How did it start? Um, you know, what are some of the rules and regulations? Well, on today's show, we got Kevin Fraley with us. He's going to talk a little bit about the history and heritage of the DNR. But before that, as always, Big Buck Hoffner has big bucks for you. All right, let's roll with Roger Frulich from Battle Creek, bringing in an 11-pointer. His score was 55 and a half. Austin Wilson from Flushing, Michigan, 15-pointer. The score, 56 and a quarter. And Niall Hudson from Morley with a 15-pointer. The score, 48. Well, if you're a history buff, you're going to enjoy this, the history and heritage of the DNR. Let's talk a little bit about the history of the DNR. Uh, 125 years. Now... Was Michigan the first one to have a conservation officer out there? Yep. It's 125 years since Michigan uh, hired the first conservation officer, so that's kind of the celebra celebration of the year. And uh, we were the first to have a CO. There, you'll see some stuff that the ne there were some COs or game wardens, of course, back then, mm -hmm. like Yellowstone National Park, but that was years later. But for a state to actually establish a position to have a guy go out and check a fish and game stuff, Michigan was... 1887. So the sportsmen, uh, along with uh, you know governmental aspects, right. uh, really got together right. uh, to start to manage our resources and where we're at today. Of course, I think Michigan is one of the great states when it comes to conservation. Yeah, and and it, and what's cool if you watch even in Michigan the transition because in those earliest years we talked about those first game wardens or COs they they basically uh, established early game laws and and help fight fires. And then as we moved into the 50s and 60s, we realized, well, we have to do more than protect wildlife. We have to learn a lot more about it. So that ushered in this research phase where we began hiring kids out of college. And colleges were establishing um, degrees in wildlife, forestry, fisheries. 
and we, we began to hire all these kind of people to learn about the resource. And so we protected it, then we learned a lot more about it, and now we're actually probably spending more time than ever working with the public and, and doing a lot more customer service and marketing and things like that, which had been absent in those earliest years. Our next segment comes to us from Tony LaPrette. Should you shoot a doe out of your buck stand? I would say that would be a no. No, here's Tony LaPrette from Ultimate Land Management and the Whitetail Bootcamp. Today we're gonna to be talking about are you shooting does out of your buck stands? Guys, a lot of people are sitting in a, a great stand and most of your properties only have one or two great stand locations on them naturally set up for a pinch point. And you're sitting in one of them and the buck ain't showing up this evening, it's starting to get dark, you got a bunch of nice does in, your, in front of your stand and you think, I'll take a doe for some venison. Guys, you couldn't do anything more wrong if you tried. You shoot that doe, she runs off. What does all does have? Witnesses. The other does all seen what happened. So now, here's this great stand, and now when the deer come out the next evening and through the rest of the season, they all look up at your tree stand, and now a buck trailing them sees that, he backs right up, he ain't coming near that stand. You cannot shoot does. Now guys, you can shoot a doe anywhere. You can put a nice food plot up by the road. You can put some bait in places that it's legal and draw these deer to a nice safe area to shoot them. Never shoot does in your prime areas. You start looking at your stand location, start rating them. At my place, we never shoot doe out of a stand that we put all that work into. What we do is throw up a pop-up blind or hunt them way up by the road. You start hunting this way, you'll find out you'll get more great stands on your property. And that's the tip of the week from Tony LaPratt. Check out our Facebook and also don't forget to go online and register lastminutehuntingandfishing.com. We're giving away a Manitoba whitetail hunt with Grandview Outfitters and it's free. Even if you don't have a deer in the contest, you can register for that Manitoba hunt. For Mike Big Buck Hofter, I'm Tim Hart. Remember, whenever you're out in the woods or wherever you're at, be safe. Thanks for watching this week's edition of the Q1 Book. You open your mouth. Come on now. He's right a bad, there, right there. You he's know what? A bad day. You could have your son, the dentist, fix your teeth. Think about that. You just did, Folks, man. sometimes it really gets intense here, and we're having an intense moment right now.